Kia ora. In this video we're going to begin our study of motion. And one of the first things we need to be able to do before we can do anything particularly interesting with it is come up with a system for representing where things are and at what time. So we're going to begin our focus uh, by just looking at motion that's in one dimension, which just means along just a single line. So we're not, we can go backwards and forwards, but not sideways. So for example, imagine that our task is to try to travel between the Marsden Lecture Theatre on the Massey Manawatu campus and the registry. So that's, we're trying to get from, well maybe the other way around, let's go from the registry to the, to the Marsden Lecture Theatre, we're trying to get to class. So the first thing we'd do is we'd rule out our line that indicates the one dimensional line that we're going to be moving along. There it goes. And before we can describe position along this line, we need to mark a few things on it. First thing we need to do is we need, need to decide somewhere on this line to be zero. So I'm just going to just, no particular reason, decide that zero is in the middle of the line. Next thing I need to do is to decide which way is positive. I can choose either, it really doesn't matter. But I'm going to choose the, the direction towards the Marsden Lecture Theatre where I'm trying to go as my positive direction. And finally, we're going to need to mark on some units. So we need to know how big our units that we're measuring in is. And I'd suggest most of the time in this course we're going to be using meters. So I would, for example, say, I'm just guessing here, this is, will be increments of about 10 meters. And so I'm just going to mark them on like this. And in the other direction, it'll be negative. And that gives us a representation of our number line we're going to work with. So I can set to indicate any point on this line by just saying uh, x, uh, my position x is equal to say 35 meters and you'd be able to tell that I am referring to this point here at 35 meters. We're going to jump into a simulation just to explore that a little further. So here is carrots, here is our number line that we just drew and you can see that my position which I usually call x is marked on here, 0 meters which is about the middle of her feet. And as I, drew, as I drag carrots around, you can just see that I can just indicate her position by a single number, x, and that tells me where on the number line I'm sitting. So if I'm here, you can see my value is negative 44.2. And you can see that no matter where I want to go on the line, specifying this position number will get me there. Okay, the next thing we want to be able to do is to represent what happens to our motion over time. So now, instead of just drawing our position variable sideways like we have been doing along there, like this, we're going to change it around and we're going to flip it to be up and down, to be our vertical axis. So we'll grab our, our axis here, we'll rotate that around. to make it vertical. And we'll grab the label as well, put that over there. And now, so now our, our position is indicated vertically instead of horizontally, and on the horizontal axis, we draw our time, which is normally going to be measured in seconds. And see, so when I've got a graph like this one, I can represent where my object is at any point in time by just specifying, so let's just put some times on here. So if I, for example, want to say that at four seconds, my object is at, let's put some mixed units on as well, my object is say two meters at four seconds, then what I do is I just indicate here, at four seconds, my object is at two meters. And maybe at three seconds, it was at one meter, maybe at two seconds, it was also at one meter, and maybe at one second it was at 0 0.5 meters, and maybe at the start I started at zero. And you can see that if I just do this for all values, even the values in between those ones, that will give me some kind of curve that will describe my whole motion. And if I want to know where my object is at any point in time, I just look it up on the curve. This is called a position time graph. We have time on our independent or, or horizontal axes, usually measured in seconds, and we've got our position x on the vertical one. Again, I've got a little animation that will help us once more to sort of understand a little bit more how this works. So what we've got on this picture here is we have an example of a position time graph. So you can see that at time zero, um, my object, once again, is carrots, is at position zero. And you can see that as time goes on, 
carrots changes position in certain ways. And I've got a little slider here which lets me drag my time along to see what's happening. So you can see that as time increases initially, position is increasing. So just to be clear about what all the pieces are, you can see on my vertical axis my position is 1.5 that corresponds to one, a position of 1.5 on this number line. So as I go across, you can see that my object carrots is moving to the right. Now when I get to two seconds, I've got as far as three meters, and so I'm over here. And if time continues on, now we've turned back around again. And so we're describing some motion to the left. And let's just play this now, so let, let it play out. And you can see that this graph that I've drawn actually is enough to describe my entire motion here. Um, it describes every, every aspect of it. I can get the whole thing um, just from this graph. So a couple of things we can take from this. We can see that when the graph is going downwards, carrots is moving to the left, and when the graph is going upwards, like is about to happen in a second, that corresponds to carrots moving to the right. When the graph is completely flat, that just corresponds to no movement at all. And we can also tell a bit about speed, which we'll study a bit more when we come to velocity a bit later on. But the steeper the graph, this is a bit shallow-ish shallow at the moment, the steeper the graph, the faster our object moves. So in that time between two and three seconds, which is going to come back around to in a minute, it's the steepest part of the graph, that also corresponds to the fastest movement, just coming through about now. See, fast, and then slower, and then similar for the rest of it. So these position time graphs are really useful for helping us to basically completely describe a motion. And we're going to be using these quite a bit in this course. Okay, so that's position in one dimension. Um, we can also represent pos position in two dimensions as well. Um, what we have to do in this case is instead of just having an, ex an x axis, when we're representing positions in two dimensions, we now have two axes. We'll call one of them x, which will be in meters just like before. But now we have to introduce a second one. Which we'll call y. So I can indicate the position of my object by just two numbers now. Um, so, for example, if I have this position here, this, this would be the number two, this would be three, then I'd call this x for position, underline, because it's a, a vector, which I'll talk a little bit more about soon. And so my position in this case would be x is equal to. The horizontal coordinate first, which is 2, my vert vertical coordinate second, which is 3, and again I'm going to specify my units. Um, or sometimes we might write it like this, 2, 3 meters. The key thing is that we have um, the two coordinates, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, uh, specified separately like this. And so now I can represent my position anywhere on a two-dimensional grid instead of just along a line, just by using these kinds of numbers. You notice I mentioned the word vector before. This notation here is called vector notation, and we'll talk more about this soon. We'll just park that piece of information just for the moment. Once again, I've got a little demo that we can see how this works. So here I've got carrots now in two dimensions. You can see that the position at the moment is 2, 0. See the x is 2, the y, which is the bottom of her feet, is 0. And as we move her around, now she doesn't have to be stuck on the line, she can go anywhere she wants, and for example if I put her up here, this is 4, 4, x value of 4, y value of 4. Or if I put, go over here where I've got an x of negative 4-ish, and a y of about 1. So I can represent position in two dimensions just as easily as in 1D, I just need two numbers instead of one.